Okay, so today what I'm doing is I'm revealing a uh, project that I'm working on, and you guys are going to see lots of mist or whatever because it's like negative 20 something in here. Um, but I'm still shooting videos for you guys. So a lot of people have already speculated what exactly Rob and I are working on, and uh, well, I guess here's your big unveil, this is what we're doing. Uh, we are making, in fact, as some people have guessed correctly, a low profile radiator shroud. Why would you want that? Well, this one is huge, and anybody who knows anything about getting proper spacings and stuff like that, the, the 2.0T in particular has certain limitations once you start doing upgrades, such as we have this big gap here uh, that uh, once you remove the factory intercooler, um, this gap is like you're pulling air around the radiator. You're no longer pulling it through the radiator. And the, the OEM fan does an excellent job in most scenarios and it bolts on easily to the aftermarket uh, radiators that we have. So, but the, we do still have certain limitations that come with using this scenario and, and one of those is spacing. Uh, for instance, I've got a measuring tape here. We are talking about five and a half inches deep. Well, that's quite deep. Uh, that's like quite a big uh, amount of room here that we've got. So we're trying to eliminate that. Now, just before anybody says anything, I do have this fan shroud sitting on the brackets here. It is able to be clipped in just as it would be. So five and a half inches is completely accurate. And uh, a little bit more information about the stock fan. And I'm just gonna. Mine's all torn apart and everything, but because we're doing, I'm doing lots of different things. But we're looking at a single 18-inch fan, uh, driven by <clears throat> what we, uh, I guess you could say, a two-stage uh, fan. So a lot of people have noticed that they've got this little doomahickey thing sticking out here, and they got a cord that goes over there, just and it just goes over there. Well, that all that is is a resistor. And what it does is when the fan is operating in low mode, electricity goes through one of the three wires, which is two, two hot and one uh, neutral, or ground, whatever you want to call it. And uh, on low speed, it goes through here, comes to the motor, but doesn't go directly to the motor. It goes back to a resistor, comes back in, and it gets stepped down, and it gets stepped down to six volts. So the fan is op operating at quote unquote half speed. It's a little bit lower than half speed due to efficiencies, but um, it operates at a slower speed. And then when it switches to high, and then we're still working out some of the details, but when it switches to high, um, it uses the second wire, whether it compounds for additional current, or if it shuts off, the ECU shuts off the second relay and drives the fan at full 12 volts, which gives you full speed. The factory fan generates at max speed roughly, uh, I think it calculated approximately to about uh, 15 to 1700 CFM based on its, its size and input voltage. I did some comparison to some comparable fans in the industrial sector using the similar blade count, similar fin pitch and everything to come up with that number. Plus or minus a bit, okay? They were just we we're talking generalization. I did not actually measure it, okay? I don't have one of those devices. But an interesting note about the factory shroud is there are actually vents all along the outside edge of it. I don't know if you guys can tell, but they're like these little ripple cuts. And uh, after talking with some people who are much more versed in this stuff than I am, what that is, is when you get up to highway speed, you have more air trying to push through than what you have the ability to draw through with the fan. So you actually get a negative pressure zone. And these are basically releases that allow air to bypass the fan because of more volume on this side. So taking that into account and what we've decided to do with the unique performance slim fan shroud, uh, we're trying to mirror that. Now this section down here, is where the factory intercooler would be. Well, on most performance cars, or most 
modified Genesis hoops, we've been getting rid of the factory intercooler. So we don't really need to be drawing air specifically through that spot. It just doesn't need to happen. So what I've done now, this is my, this is where I come in, this is where uh, you guys are benefiting from something that I wasn't anticipating bringing uh, to everybody else. I figured it would just be a one-off, but after making a couple of mentions places, people really seem to like the idea. So here it is. This is what we're going to be we're going to be bringing to you guys in the next couple of months. And uh, what it is is a CNC or CNC bent and laser cut fan shroud designed for two 12-inch low-profile fans. Now these grooves here do the similar thing as the other one. They allow that when you get up to high speed, these grooves allow the, the air to flow through despite the fact that the fans are, run, are running or off. They just give a lot more ventilation. Uh, in some applications you may see little covers that go over these and what that does is they open and close based on the fan. So as the fan is drawing air and as pressure is higher, it will actually suck the little flap shut. Um, and then when the, the speed on the other side of the fan overcomes what these fans are able to basically vacuum out, the fan, the, the, these little flaps will open. Well, with this particular build, and you've got to remember that this is a prototype, I've opted to not do that, but through trial and error, we may go that route down the road. So, um, getting a little bit further into the design. Now, there are a couple of design changes from this version to what we will be releasing uh, or I should say Unique Performance will be releasing a couple of things that uh, you guys will see uh, change down the road before it comes into a full production unit. This cover here is actually just a laser protector for the aluminum. So it's kind of a pain to take off when you're uh, working in these temperatures. Ah, I'll get this peeled and then uh, then we'll come back. Okay, so got it all unwrapped. That uh, is very cold. Uh, now, as you guys can probably tell from the texture, give me a second. Or not really. Uh, it is a kind of a satin finish aluminum. Now this piece is complete, completely aluminum, single unit. Uh, there will be some, like I said, modifications done to it for the final production version, such as this doesn't even have the fans mounted to it yet. Uh, the fans are on their way. And uh, there will be uh, the, whole, the point of this is that it will be completely plug and play. So we're working really hard to find uh, or to get all of the electrical sorted out to make sure that they run. One fan is low, both fans are high, um, that uh, every th all the fit and finish is perfect as you can tell. I don't even have uh, mounting brackets on mine. Like Again, this is a prototype and showing off the unique uh, performance badge that we're that, uh, Rob's going to be putting on uh, all of the products in the future. A couple of design changes right off the bat that you guys are going to see is this one is a tapered fitment and the final production version is going to be a square box fitment which is a 90 degree uh, connector instead of a 45 degree so uh, that'll be one change and how basically this all works is this fan shroud here is less than an inch. Yeah, less than an inch. And aftermarket radiators, because this is a factory one, they actually, instead of stopping at the end, uh, in the middle, they actually come straight to the edge. So it actually pushes your, your rad fan shroud out 
a little bit farther, which has caused some people with aftermarket intercooler piping to have some fitment issues with their reservoir. Well, uh, we're trying to get away, uh, get rid of that aspect and make it so it's all inclusive unit that you mount in and the fan depth, we're going to go from five and a half inches um, down to about three inches for total depth. So we're going to be saving two and a half inches between your engine and your, your, your belt. Now some people may go, well, why does that really matter? Well, if you're working on a vehicle that sees a lot of track time or you're working, you just happen to work on your vehicle a lot, you like to make sure everything's correct, everything's tightened where they're supposed to be, or if you ever have to change your pulley belt, um, this will make it significantly easier. With this mounted, you'll be able to actually change your crank pulley without taking your radiator shroud off at all. You'll be able to, the, you'll only have to take out the one panel at the bottom and you'll be able to take out your, your crank pulley no problem. Now, I know some of you guys are going, wait, this is a 2.0T. I thought you said that there was going to be some 3.8 go action going on, and that is true. We're going to be changing the design slightly for 3.8s due to the fact that uh, uh, the people that we think are going to be more interested in this are going to be the people who are running higher horsepower 3.8s. The 3.8 has some cooling issues that I've noticed, and I've worked with several different people um, over the past at least 18 months, and with several companies actually, on working out some of the cooling issues that the 3.8 does have. And uh, after a look at the block and the, the way things are and everything, the problem seems to be primarily based around the fact that A, the 3.8 makes, has a radiator that just barely cools the 3.8 in the first place. Two, the 3.8 uh, has the same fan control system going on as the 2.0T, which is not conducive to the way that Hyundai has set up the temperature scaling for the, uh, for the, for the cam phasing. Um, so that kind of hinders people's performance once they start putting on turbo kits and supercharger kits, or they start running the balls off of their naturally aspirated one, that they start running into, they're getting cam retardation because of heat soak. Um, or in some cases, the it's not getting up to temperature and it's you're having some issues. So ha being able to bring it into that perfect sweet zone takes a little bit more effort, especially with the 3.8s. But we do have very reliable companies that tune the 3.8, and uh, in the future we're hoping, or at least I am, that we'll be able to provide an, a complete cooling package for the 3.8 that will allow you guys to run as much horsepower as you want well, to, to a certain extent. I mean, if you're going to run 2,000 horsepower out of a 3.8, well, guess what? You're going to need a lot more cooling. But um, the average, you know, five, 600 horsepower 3.8, uh, we'd like to be able to make sure that you guys have enough cooling as possible and that people who don't necessarily make that much power but who spent a lot of time on the track, on road courses, autocross, uh, specifically events that don't necessarily have a whole lot of frontal coverage for airflow, and they really need to rely on the fan system and the radiator's efficiency to cool it. We, well, I'd really like to make sure that you guys have that option as well, that you guys have a performance package, uh, or not necessarily a performance, but a cooling package that is set up for you guys to have everything you need to make your car as functional as possible. So partnering with Unique Performance and a couple of other companies that I can't mention at the, at the moment, um, we plan on making sure that that is set in stone for you guys, that you guys have everything you need uh, at the end of the day to be able to compete with the higher horsepower 2.0s. And I know that, you know, they get a lot more love and a lot easier and I had somebody say that I'm lazy and I don't support the 3.8 because I don't like the 3.8 and that is completely not true. The reason that I develop less products with other companies for the 3.8 is simply this. I don't own one. If I don't own a vehicle, it is significantly harder for me to prototype, test fit, measure, all of this um, kind of stuff. 
it, I, I just don't have that ability. And for me to go out and buy a 3.8, well, I would love to do it. It's just not financially viable for me to own every single car that that is possible, right? So, or iteration of that vehicle, I should say, because I know some people are blaming me for 3.8 GDI performance parts not being, being available, and I don't understand that at all. But, so either way, going back to the product, uh, this is a complete mutual design between me and Unique Performance and his fabricator. Um, so you guys will be seeing more products similar to this down the road. This piece here, just if anybody's wondering, may weighs maybe an eighth of a pound, so uh, two or three ounces at the most. It is very, very lightweight. Um, and once it has brackets and everything on it, it'll be a little bit heavier, but it will be, like I said, drop-in ready. Because of how low this goes, there, uh, it's going to take us a little bit of time to sort out the brackets to make sure that A, we clear the, the piping, B, we don't interfere with anything that may be below here, um, and that we use all of the appropriate points and try to make it aimed at whichever radiator you may choose, this will still work with it. So there's a lot of different products that, that we are trying to make sure that we get perfect fitment with. Um, so you guys will definitely be seeing more of this in the coming months. Uh, and I know you guys are going months, come on, you gotta do better than that. Well, you guys can have a product quickly, you guys can have a product affordably, or you guys can have the right product. Right now, I may mean at the affordable and the right product, so it's going to take us a little bit of time. Um, but big, huge props to Rob at Unique Performance for really stepping up, and because this was originally going to be a complete one-off custom piece exclusively for me. And uh, he said, do you think other people would be interested in something like this? So I made the post, and thank you guys in the community who actually read and uh, participated by giving me your uh, giving me your feedback and saying, yeah, we really want to see this, and especially the 3.8 guys who made sure that their voices were heard, that they specifically, that they definitely want a 3.8 version of this coming out. So trust me, I'm not forgot I have not forgotten you guys, and I have complete intentions of making sure that you guys have something like this for you. And I have already designed one up. And uh, we may be looking for a 3.8 in the Ontario area to be doing uh, product development with us on a bunch of different products that I have planned for the 3.8 down the road. Uh, so if you guys are interested in participating or you guys want to see more uh, products that I'll be you know, pushing out uh, with different companies over the next uh, well, year, actually, I've got a whole bunch of products scheduled that I'm trying to release for this year. Unfortunately, some of them were supposed to come out last year in the 2013, uh, but time, uh, different things came up and it just never happened. So, um, but yeah, post in the comment section below, post up on Facebook, post up on GenCoop, post up on rearwheeldrivecoop.com, post up anywhere that you happen to see the Drunken Panda, and you guys will, uh, you know, let me know by doing that, you guys want more products, more innovation, and more stuff that uh, is basically, well, Snoopy approved for your, your Gen Coupe. Quality is number one for me, so if it's not done right, I don't want it. And uh, that's why my car has taken forever to be done, because I want the correct products being put on it in the first place. And uh, hopefully the end results will show that quality does actually mean something at the end of the day. So, Thanks for watching. Thanks again to Unique Performance. We'll see you guys, uh, we'll see more of you guys later this month when uh, we continue with Project Woodstock.